Welcome to the channel. Lovely to have you. My name is Vaughn. Bora Mastery founder. Great to have you here. Thank you for dealing with my quirky entries. I am so pumped. How many people responded? Thank you to the growing channel. For those who don't know me, my name's Vaughn, as I just said. I don't know why I just said that again. I love to bring these Facebook lives to you to help with one specific aspect of dancing that is not often talked about. Mindset, growth, and strategies to help you perform your absolute best, whatever level you are, whether you're starting out or you've got massive aspirations or you've been dancing for years, you can improve and change the quality and the, um, and the direction of your dancing astronomically. But, and I really, really love today's topic because it's so, so powerful and it's something we all struggle with to an extent and it's something we have to be aware of to shape and change is our beliefs. Our beliefs create the fact. This is so powerful that I think that I'm going to have to do more episodes on this. But I want to thank everyone who recently uh, submitted their challenge or their big uh, mindset problem they're, they're having at the moment with their dancing. Because it's really interesting to see when I asked what the dance challenge was or the mindset challenge was. And at least 80 to 90% of the, the comments were from you saying it was a mindset problem versus a dancing problem. Because the two are interlinked. You know, you're never going to outperform your belief systems. So please stay with me on this because I want to discuss a little bit about beliefs, how they are, how you can identify limiting beliefs and change them, which will ultimately change your outcome of your entire life. Like they're so powerful. And of course, it's like, you know, you got to believe, you know, you have to believe. But it's when I first heard that word, I thought it was corny. I didn't really understand. But beliefs actually are an inherent part of how you do everything. So you won't outact your belief system. It's very important to understand that. You can't be like, oh, I don't have bad beliefs. It's like, no, that's not true. Like our beliefs hold us in place to an extent. So we have to know what they mean and what we can do about them. Now, I want to thank Angela, Ellen, and Joy for uh, I'm answering your question today to the best I can in this moment, uh, going off the cuff and with little preparation, but I'm going to you know, give you my heart and soul as much as I can to help you with your questions about belief and confidence because of course the two can also work together or against you but to everyone else I'll come back to you at some point and there's more training at boreamastery.com if you had things about posture balance or hips and and those sorts of tangible uh, issues uh, I have specific training for you you can check out on the YouTube channel as well okay so I'm going to start this by saying whether you think you can or whether you think you can't you are right that comes from Henry Ford. I think it's more from Napoleon Hill, but everyone attributes it to Henry Ford. So think about it. Whether you think you can, whether you think you can't, you are right. So it's not even about doubting your beliefs because if you have a belief that is, let's say it's a, I don't like using the word, but let's say it's a negative belief. It's a belief that doesn't serve you. If you believe that to be true, you are right. Meaning that if you think you can't do that thing, you're absolutely right. And so if you flip that and say, I can do this, you're absolutely right. And so why is this important? Because beliefs can be so simple to change sometimes, but we really mess it up by making it too complicated. And there's quite a lot of subject matter behind this, but I, I want you to think about it from a point of view in your own life of what is it you would like to change? I think one of the starting points to identifying beliefs and how they shape what we do is what is it are you trying to change? So look at the results. Now, when you look at a result, don't judge it. The result is a reflection of your conscious understanding. Like it's, it's a reflection of not only your understanding, but your conditioned pattern of behavior, the way you act in the world. Now, you might notice something really strange. Not everybody acts the same way as you do. You ever notice that? It's like, why don't those people do things the way I do them? And like, that's frustrating sometimes, right? It's like, oh man, they, they're different people to me. They don't look like I look and they don't do what I do. I don't know why I throw those accents out. I just like doing it. But it gives a good uh, illustration of the point. It's like, man, I don't get on with my partner. It's like, they're so different to me. Well, the reason they're different is they've got different values to you, all right? Your values are like your rules for life, how you do things. And so whatever you value, that's how you're going to act in the world. Now, our values create belief systems. So it's like, do you believe that you can be a good dancer? Like, do you believe that you're tone deaf in your dancing? Do you believe because of your age? 
You're too old to pursue that goal. Are you too young to pursue that goal, right? So the ageism side of things hits people on both angles. You know, when I was a young man and I was 15, 16, coming up in the world, I had to change the belief that, you know, I could run a business. I was like, I'm 15, I'll start a business, why not? You know, it was like, that's a good belief system to have. Like, why not? Like, I'll reserve judgment, let me try it first. I'm going to give an example. Tonight, I had a gentleman join me in the class. Well, he tried to join. He, he didn't really make a very good attempt. And what happened was, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to him, unfortunately, but he came in, stood in the class for about a minute, and then sat down. I said, you're not going to join tonight? And he said, this isn't my thing. And I said, well, don't let that stop you. And then I smiled and walked off. I was like, why should it stop you? You know, think about it. Is there more courage in being the person who's scared and goes after it is there more, I suppose, credit for that person? More of the rewards go to that person? The answer is yes, because it's not about having no fear. It's about, it doesn't matter if you have no skill in the beginning. It doesn't matter if you don't have the capability in the beginning, because you don't. Like, who? everybody sucks at the beginning. Like, I make a very big point to say, when you start dancing, you suck. That's okay, because it isn't about perfection. It's the pursuit. And you've got to be okay with being a newbie. Because if I was to do what you do, whatever your skill set is, if I was to do that, I would suck when I first start. I would be so mind-bogglingly bad at it. And that's normal. I even made the joke saying later on, like, it's like, you, you work with cars, right? And he said, yes. I said, well, look at me. Look at my hair. Look at this hair. This, these hands. These ain't touched a tool <laughs> ever, right? Like, I didn't want know what to do with a car. Like, that's not my specialty. But I understand people as best as I can. And I study that. And I understand dancing. Like, I study those two areas all the time. So I understand the basics and how those things work, but I wouldn't understand what you do. Like, so what I would need if I went there is I would need a belief system that said to me that it's okay if I'm not good right now, but that's not a reflection on my potential. It's not a reflection on where I could go, and it's not a reflection on what's possible for me. And I think that's really important for you to hear because you might be sitting there, you know, Angela or Ellen or Joy, and going, I don't have the confidence because I'm around really good people who are further ahead than me. I was like, well, why let that stop you? That's a limiting belief. They are only better because they've done maybe more time, more investment of lessons. Uh, they, they might have a, more of a predisposition to being a better dancer because of their physique. So what? Don't let that stop you, right? That's a belief. It's like, here's the thing. There's, there's a great saying I, I mentioned earlier. Your belief will create the fact. So... At any one point in your life, you have been absolutely screwed by this problem. And this is the specific problem. You go to school and you get a report card and the report card says to you, you're a failure because you didn't do well in this subject. What a bunch of crap. That report card simply reflects a certain mental state, behaviors and patterns at a certain moment in time in the past and it's showing up now, it's not a reflection of what you can do if you know what to change. And one of those starting points is the belief systems. It's not the only change. You also have to change something called a self-image, which we can talk about later. The point is though, we're so trained to look at that report card and think that is who we are. And if you do it often enough, you believe that, right? Think of the word belief. Belief has the word lie in it. Does that have the word truth in it? Has the word lie? So if you believe a lie and you say a lie often enough, it will formulate your beliefs. How many things do you believe that are utter crap? I mean, really, think about it for a moment. Now, this doesn't mean that you go to run around and start just having this narcissistic viewpoint about yourself saying that I'm the best at everything. I can do everything. Like, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need the Trump attitude, right? It's, it's having a core understanding of you knowing yourself and going and asking this certain question inside. The question is this, where did that belief come from? Because the chances are your beliefs didn't come from you. Like most of the stuff we say, if you really objectively look at what you say on a day-to-day -day basis, it doesn't really come from you. It's like you're repeating stuff you heard elsewhere or picked up along the way. It's, it's so wild, but if you really do that experiment for a week, you'll be mind-bogglingly blown about how much stuff you say that isn't yours. It's like, whoa, I'm like my coach. I'm like this. I'm speaking like that Australian dude on Facebook. The point is this. You've got to ask yourself, where did that belief 
come from? Now, then the next thing you've got to understand is, and ask yourself, is it serving me? Because whatever you're saying to yourself consistently and drilling in over and over through what's called the narrative in your mind, the story about the way things are in your life and why they are the way they are, you are going to reinforce the belief systems you have. Now, the, the challenge you come up with is when you identify a belief that you don't like, is you go, right, but I've believed that for so long, Vaughn, that if I go to change it, I'm not really going to believe the thing I'm telling myself is the opposite is true. So if you're walking around saying that, as ex an example in relationships, that all love equals pain, so I'm not lovable, and you've said that to yourself for 20 years, saying to yourself that you are lovable and that it's okay like to have relationships that break down because that's part of being human and it's how you love yourself that matters as well, that internal relationship with you, you've got to learn to love yourself, as cheesy as that sounds, it's so vitally important to understand and to do. But when you first encounter that, if you've not said that to yourself in your life, it doesn't feel right. Don't let that stop you. Because have you ever considered that what you're feeling is not accurate either? Sometimes our feelings are not the best gauge of what's really going on. Sometimes they don't really represent what's happening properly. So it pays to look at yourself and say, okay, if I'm dancing, if I want to really do well in this next event, what am I saying to myself? Am I saying to myself, I'm not as good as the other competitors because they're taller, thinner, slimmer, younger, better than me. Oh man, look at those legs, look at those legs, look how fast they are. It's like, I don't have legs like that, oh my God. Okay, not helping you. So, but why should it stop you, right? It's like, well, you know what? They are not as tall as me or I'm bigger. Like one of the beliefs I needed to adopt is, I, and look, I, I'm telling this for a place of love because I believe I've been so harsh on myself my whole life. I've been like this super, like I've got to achieve stuff massively. I've got to do big things, big goals. And I believe in that, right? I believe that's important. But not at the detriment of like your mental health, right? And so I, I would go to Blackpool and my first time I went to Blackpool, I'm like, oh my God, who am I to be here on this floor? Like really, like, wow, these are the legends of dancing. Like, who am I to be there? And I had to start training myself to say, you've earned the right to be there. You have every right to go and give those guys a competition. It's like, it's okay if it's rigged and they're gonna win anyway, who cares? You go and you be their competition because they need someone to compete against anyway. And so, Here's what I started saying to myself. I was like, I have perfect balance. Right? I didn't have perfect balance. I'm a confident dancer. I have perfect posture. Now, I'd start saying this to myself. I didn't have it. Right? So, but if you say it often enough, the lie becomes your truth. How many things are you saying to yourself that are full of shit, that aren't actually true, but you said them so long you believe them? Like, think about your money. Like, you're poor, you're broke, you have no money. Right, I need money to dance. It's like, that's belief systems coming through, right? You've got to figure out your belief systems around money. What's your relationship to it? What about the quality of your relationships? What is that about? Like, how are you going into relationships that you're not lovable? You're not good enough? You know, how do you speak about yourself? You think this doesn't matter. It has everything to do with dancing. Like, everything on the dance floor is a reflection of your belief systems, uh, the way that you perform is a reflection of your belief systems. The way that you show up into the studio is a reflection of your belief systems. Um, it's, it, everything is governed by it. And I want you to, to think about it from your own point of view that you can't outact your belief system. So if you've got a next level you want to get to, which I hope you do, and this is why these videos exist, you need to rewire beliefs that serve that higher you than where you are today because your belief systems serve to keep you where you are, to protect you, and to make sure that you don't do anything stupid and invite terror into your life, okay? So you need to think about it and go, okay, the next time this ugly monster pops up in my head, you have to identify it and say, okay, where'd the belief come from? But I'm gonna give you the, probably the most important piece of advice because you've been hanging on this long, so thank you. You will never rationalize or out-talk your belief systems. So if you're talking to yourself and you find this voice coming at you saying, you're no good, you can't do that. Who do you think you are, right? That side of you. You can't say on the other side, I'm good. No, I deserve this. 
I'm better. It's like, no, you don't. It's like, that fight won't work. You can't have that inner dialogue. So you have to learn to do something called pattern breaking. So when a voice pops up in your head like, I can't do this. Let's just use a very basic example. But you say, I can't do this. I just can't do it. You can't stand there and argue to yourself and go, no, you can do it. You can do it. Look at all the stuff you've done before. You've been amazing. You've got the legs. You've got the, you've got the hair. You can do this. You've got the turtleneck. It's like, no, you can't justify to yourself. You will never out-rationalize your rationed lies to your mind. What you must do is the pattern-breaking idea. And the pattern-breaking is, okay, so for example, if, if it came up in your head and you're like, I can't do this, the first thing you need to do is wave your hand up in the air, do this at home, I want to see how weird you can be with me right now. Wave up your hand, put your other hand up, and give yourself a self-high-five. And as weird as that is, you can't help but laugh if you self-high-five yourself, especially if you go for it like, bang! The reason I'm telling you to do something stupid is because you need to break the pattern of thought. You cannot rationalize rationed lies. So the more you argue yourself, the more you're going to get into this spiral and this self-fulfilling cycle, and you're not going to feel good as a result. So you literally need to do something different. It needs to be radically different. It needs to either be a random jump in the air, or you need to hear that little voice and be like, oh, that's nice, and then like dance and be like, what's up, movement? Dance, right? Boom! Like, do something that breaks the pattern. I think that's the benefit of us being dancers. We know stuff we can do. We can go do a waltz. We can do a cha-cha. Like, don't even worry about it because it will go away. That's your opportunity then to reinforce the next belief. You can't out-rationalize it, but you can break it. And when you break it, you can insert, it's called a vacuum effect, the law of vacuum. You can insert the next belief. So you have the belief pop up says, I can't do it. You break the pattern. Boom! You do something. Then... You start telling yourself, I can do this, I got this, because you'll feel better for the movement. Do you understand? And so this is a way you can start to condition the beliefs, but you've got to identify them first. And so you identify them by looking at your results and the way you talk to yourself. And through that, you start to recondition the beliefs. When you change the beliefs, you change the facts of your life. Facts are not set in stone. And I want you to remember that like everything you've done in your life, everything you've done, everything, is a result of those beliefs. It's a result of those decisions that you've made. It's a result of things happening around you for whatever reason, and you've reacted and responded to them in a certain way. And that's what we do in life. We see things, we react, we internalize them, we look at them, we create a meaning for them. They actually don't mean anything. Like, a, like an event happening, those better dancers around you don't mean anything. You interpret that and create your own meaning. And so you look at that thing of like the better dancers around you and you go, they're so much better than me. They don't, they're not better than anyone. They just are. They is, if you will, right? It just is. You determine the meaning by the way you look at it. You look at it through your lens of perception and the way you talk to yourself about it. And those belief systems formulate how you're going to go forward in life. I really hope that this has been a good introduction to beliefs. It's pretty heavy content. I love it. I think this is great. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. And please feel free to share this video with anyone you might care about and think they'll benefit from this. Uh, in the meantime, check out ballroommasteryacademy.com. And I want to share one last thing about me with this. With Ballroom Mastery, my dream, and this is a, this is a belief for me, I'm still, I still have two things going on. I'm like, do I really think I can do this? And on the other side, I'm like, of course you can do it. This is going to be amazing. I want to connect people all over the world with dancing. Like, Ballroom Mastery is growing. We've got thousands of people on the Facebook page, thousands on YouTube. But that's not enough. I want to create tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions if the market's there, and connect everyone around the world. I want people to tune into these with me and to, for us to improve dancing together, regardless of location. For you to work with me in my private studio at home and to really start to realize that you can do so much more than you've probably thought is possible up until this point. And I want to use my own life as an example. I'm, I've tested these things. I've, I've done them in the dancing world. And I've used these in other areas in life to propel my life forward. And I know the battle. I know how hard it is. I know the struggles, how real and hard it can be for some of you, particularly those who have emailed me and said their entire journey of dancing. And the stuff you guys have gone through is like, my God, it's like I've got nothing to cry about. Like, wow, some people really have it tough. But they use dancing as that, that vehicle, you know, to, 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 to enlighten their soul, if you will, and to make life better. And so I want to share what I know about dancing with everyone. I don't want to be restricted to just the studio. So I thank you for being here. Uh, please share in my mission. 
And, you know, that's going to help feed my beliefs that this is working as well. And so, you know, I'm in this too. I'm in the trenches tr doing the work. Um, and I don't know if things will always work out. So that's life. We don't know. But belief is that ability to see the invisible and to do what people think is impossible until you do it. So this is Vaughn. I want to thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video and where we'll master the art of ballroom dancing together.